I can, only answer the question what am I to do? If I can, answer the prior question of what story, or stories do I find myself, apart? What matters at this stage, is the construction of local forms of community within which, civility and the intellectual, and moral life can be, sustained through the new dark ages, which are already upon us. And if, the tradition of the virtues, was able to survive the horrors, of the last dark ages, we are not entirely, without ground for hope. This time however, the barbarians are not waiting. Beyond the frontiers, they have already been, governing us for quite some time. Virtues are dispositions, not only to act in particular ways, but also to feel in particular ways. To act virtuously is not, as Kant was later to think, to act against inclination, it is to act from inclination. Formed by the cultivation of the virtues. Christians have given atheists less and less in which to disbelieve the good life for man is the life spent in seeking for the good life for man and the virtues necessary for the seeking are those which will enable us to understand what more and what else the good life for man is truth has been displaced as a value and replaced by psychological effectiveness it is only by participation in a rational practice-based community that one becomes rational a modern society is indeed often at least in surface appearance nothing but a collection of strangers each pursuing his, or her own interests, under minimal constraints. At the foundation of moral thinking, lie beliefs and statements, the truth of which, no further reason can be given. What this brings out, is that modern politics cannot be, a matter of genuine moral consensus. And, it is not. Modern politics is civil war carried on by other means. Facts, like telescopes and wigs for gentlemen, were a 17th century invention. Individuals inherit a particular space within an interlocking set of social relationships, lacking that space, they are nobody or at best a stranger or an outcast. To know oneself, as such a social person is however, not to occupy a static, and fixed position. It is to find oneself placed, at a certain point on a journey. With set goals, to move through life, is to make progress, or to fail to make progress, toward a given end. Of what story, or stories do I find myself apart? The way to bring out the best in the British people is to attack them. Charles II once invited the members of the Royal Society to explain to him why a dead fish weighs more than the same fish alive a number of subtle explanations, were offered to him. He then pointed out, that it does not. Morality which is, no particular society's morality is, to be found nowhere. Modern systematic politics, whether liberal, conservative, radical, or socialist, simply has to be rejected from a standpoint that owes genuine allegiance to the tradition of the virtues for modern politics itself.
expresses in its institutional forms a systematic rejection of that tradition. There ought not be two histories, one of political and moral action, and one of political and moral theorizing, because there were not two pasts, one populated only by actions, the other only by theories. Every action is the bearer and expression of more or less theory-laden beliefs and concepts, every piece of theorizing and every expression of belief is a political and moral action. Imprisoning philosophy within the professionalization and specializations of an institutionalized curriculum after the manner of our contemporary European and North American culture is arguably a good deal more effective in neutralizing its effects than either religious censorship or political terror. Modern politics is civil war carried on by other means. What our laws show is the extent and degree to which conflict has to be suppressed. Raymond Aaron ascribes to Weber the view that each man's conscience is irrefutable. While Weber holds that an agent may be more or less rational in acting consistently with his values, the choice of any one particular evaluative stance or commitment can be no more rational than any other. All faiths and all evaluations are equally non-rational. Traditions, when vital, embody continuities of conflict. Indeed, when a tradition becomes porkine, it is always dying or dead. I have confronted theoretical positions whose protagonists claim that what I take to be historically produced characteristics of what is specifically modern are, in fact the timelessly necessary characteristics of all and any moral judgment, of all and any selfhood. The attempted professionalization of serious and systematic thinking has had a disastrous effect upon our culture. A striking feature of moral and political argument in the modern world is the extent to which it is innovators, radicals, and revolutionaries who revive old doctrines, while their conservative and reactionary opponents are the inventors of new ones. We are waiting, not for a gato but for another doubtless very different street benedict. Those emotive theorists who said that the function of moral utterance was to evince emotion would have been correct if they had substituted the indefinite for the definite article. 